wanted to come on here and give my testimony i am a born again christian i used to be catholic so um a lot of people don't know this about me but i had a defect in my heart when i was born it's congenital heart defect um i have the scar here to prove it <laughs> i had open heart surgery at three days old um when i was born I was born with the blue skin and black nails because I could not breathe. I was dying. And at that time, uh, my family was Catholic. So, you know, all they knew was to pray um, how they could, right? And so they, they prayed um, like never before because, you know, those of you who are mothers know know how hard it is to find out that your baby is suffering and you don't know how to con how to help them so you can only imagine how my parents were they were very devastated so um they reached out to the lord for help and the surgeon he was saying that um, it could go two ways i could live up to a certain age and then die from complications um, or I can live and have, um, you know, machines connect to me all my life. The Lord is so um, merciful because he, he healed me. He healed me. He um, used that surgeon to fix my heart. And praise God, I'm here 26 years later and I have no machine next to me. I'm healed. I've been healed by the living God. Now, fast forward to when I was 18. You know, at that age, um, you're a little bit rebellious. At that age, I knew who Jesus was. I've had encounters with God all my life, but I never realized those were encounters. So, um, at that moment, I had already turned to Christianity. I was no longer a Catholic. I found the truth. But I was still lukewarm, meaning that I was still doing the things of this world and also things for God. So I was one foot in, one foot out. And um, at that moment, I started developing a lot of uh, anxiety attacks and um, a lot of palpitations. And that was because of the bad choices that I was making. I was hanging out with bad people. I was depressed. And so all of that accumulated, uh, all of that stress and caused me to have anxiety attacks. One day my sister invited me to this church that she was attending. And for the longest time, I would always say no when she would invite me. But this time I felt so desperate to go and seek God because um, I thought something was wrong with me. Because at one point I went to the hospital because I thought I was going to die of a heart attack because I had a really bad anxiety attack. So at that moment, uh, I remember when I was in service, I prayed and I asked the Lord to heal me and to let me know that I'm okay, you know. Also was having um, numbness in my arms and it was mainly because of the stress, but I mean, I didn't know at that point. And so I remember at that moment at the altar, the pastor, he called on to me and the message was the Lord spoke through him and said, um, my child, my daughter, you are healed. And at that very moment when he said those things, the pastor didn't know what I was going through. I immediately just busted out crying because I knew it was God. And I knew it was Jesus because I prayed to Jesus. I wasn't praying to nobody else but Jesus. And so um, I knew that was confirmation that I was healed. So after that, uh, around 24 to 25 years old, I had recently switched over to a new cardiologist. So I had my pediatric cardiologist for about 21 to 22 years. Then after that, um, I switched over to a new cardiologist that he didn't really know much about me. Well, of course, you know, um, we always, every year prior to that, I've always been to my cardiologist and we've always taken ultrasounds, EKGs and all that stuff um, and monitored my heart and everything came out perfectly fine. I've always been fine. But this specific visit, this was actually my first visit with him. He started kind of concerning me because he started saying that he was looking at um, the ultrasound and he saw that he can only see part of the heart and he wanted to see the whole heart and saw um, the, one of the main arteries is a lot more stretched out than the other. 
it's leaking blood, which that's something I already knew because my other cardiologist had already told me. But when he started mentioning about uh, possibly doing a procedure to correct that or even going into surgery, I freaked out and I was like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. He's like, what? You have to. And I was like, no, I'm not. Because in my thought process, I was like, no, like God told me I was healed. I had my encounter with him. He told me I was healed. You know what I mean? And he said I was fine. And to me, it's like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know what I mean? And at that point, I started doubting God. You know, when you're not firm in the word or firm in your faith or when you're lukewarm, anything that the enemy, the devil throws at you, immediately you're going to believe them and you're going to fall and you're going to doubt God and you're going to start questioning everything, which it happens. You know what I mean? So at this point, uh, I remember I started being very tormented by, um, you know, wicked thoughts, like demons, you know, putting things in my mind, saying that I'm going to die, saying that I'm going to have a heart attack, saying that it's not going to, you know, I have to go to surgery. And I remember uh, around that time when I was 18, when I had my encounter with God, I remember I told the Lord when I was praying, I was like, Lord, that's one thing I don't want to do is going through another surgery. I'm, I'm afraid. I'm terrified of that. You know, um, believe it or not, I was a newborn, but that traumatized me. It was very traumatic for me. Even though I did not remember it, it was traumatic. As a child, I was always afraid of everything. I used to be afraid of flash photography. I mean, that's weird, you know? And it was because of that trauma that I went through as a baby. So um, I remember day and night I was getting tormented um, with these wicked thoughts. And I remember I just started crying out to God every night, every night, every night, every night, every day. I started crying out to him, begging him for reassurance because I started doubting. You know what I mean? I was, I was doubting. And I remember I was just begging the Lord to um, give me reassurance and, you know, let me know. And one thing that my cardiologist mentioned to me at that um, appointment, he said, well, if you don't want to do it, he's like, we can do the MRI and then go from there. And I was like, okay, I'll do the MRI. I mainly did it for reassurance because deep down, even though I had some doubts, I was holding on to that. I was holding on to the word of God of what the Lord told me that I was going to be healed. So then after my MRI, I um, was waiting for my results. And the night before my results, I remember I could not sleep. I was shaken up. I was like scared, crying, begging him to please, you know, let everything be okay. And I remember the exact same words that I said. I was like, Lord, I want these results to show that I am healed. I want the doctor to tell me that everything's okay, that the results came out great, that my heart came out great, that my surgery was great. It was not good. It was great. That's what I, I want to hear from them, Lord. And please, Lord, reassure me, Lord. The next morning, I prayed that same prayer. And as I was going up the stairs to my um, job, uh, I got a phone call from the nurse. And I got so nervous, my heart was like pounding. And I remember um, her saying, she's like, hey, I wanted to tell you about your test results. The doctor wanted me to tell you that your heart looks great. Your surgery was an outstanding surgery. The surgeon who performed your surgery was outstanding. And I was like, I was so shook that I started praising God right then and there. And I cried and I was like, thank you. And I'm like, Lord, you answered my prayers. You answered my prayers. And I just felt so grateful, you know, and God is good. He will never fail you. And just proved to me that it, it wasn't my religion. It wasn't my Catholic beliefs. It wasn't the Virgin Mary. It was Jesus who healed me. It was him. You see, in the Bible, it says that Jesus, when he was walking on this earth, he healed the sick and healed the blind. You know, if he could do that 2,000 years ago, what makes you think he can't heal me? You know, Jesus loves you so much. And I just wanted to share this testimony and encourage you guys. If you're going through anything, this is your confirmation that everything is going to be okay. That Jesus is in control of everything. That he loves you. And he loved you so much that he died for you and me on the cross. He became the perfect sacrifice for our sins. 
John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that um, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall never perish but have everlasting life. You need to believe in Jesus Christ to be saved. It is by his grace and not by our works. Our works cannot save us. Us doing good things cannot save us. It's through the grace of Jesus Christ. It's through the grace of God why we are saved. And all you have to do is just pray and stay in repentance to maintain the salvation. I love you guys and I hope you guys have a blessed day. Bye.